All right, today we'll be tearing apart, cleaning, and rebuilding a carburetor on a Prairie 400 Kawasaki. We're going to need a Phillips screwdriver, a small flathead screwdriver, and these are jet cleaning um, tool here, made by K&L or some other brands. Um, we've already pulled this cover off if the carburetor is off of the four-wheeler. So you just got Phillips head screw. Here's where your throttle comes down into your throttle cable. It circles around to here and will go into this um, piece here and that'll just pull that butterfly and you can see it here on this side pulling that butterfly up. Here's your idle adjust and essentially what is that that is doing is just um, opening that butterfly a little bit more so if you were to turn that idle screw it would just slightly open that butterfly. So we've pulled this cover off We've got your, your bowl here, and we've got four screws holding that bowl on. We've got a plunger here. We've got, this is, uh, excuse me, a primer here. We've got the choke here, and that's 12 millimeter uh, plastic cap on it here. There's a cable that runs through here, spring loaded, and then we've got your plunger on the end here. And these, this is a common problem, these getting stuck. If you get stuck, sometimes what you can do is take a screwdriver, you wanna use a little bit bigger one than this, and you want to spray some, some kind of lube down in this port here. And what I like to do is just kind of slowly turn that plunger. And that will just kind of work that lube inside there. And then at some point you can either drop it out like that or you can kind of turn it out and it will um, uh, loosen up enough to get out. So the first thing we're going to do is pull this bowl off here. And four, again, four Phillips screws on the bottom. And they don't have to be very tight. Uh, you want them a little bit tighter than hand tight, but you're going into an aluminum carburetor and so they'll strip out fairly easily. If you can't get them off with a Phillips screwdriver, uh, Phillips screwdriver, you can use a small set of vice grips. All these screws you can get on with a small set of vice grips um, and loosen them up that way. Once you get them loose, a lot of times they'll come out free, but uh, just get them loose is hard. Sometimes these bowls will stick on here. There's, a, uh, there's an O-ring on here. You just take it tap on it, that'll break that seal, you'll be able to pull it off. This carburetor here uh, has got a little bit of buildup in it, a little bit of corrosion. Now this will clean up over time with fuel. You can set it in a solvent tank. Um, you can see here, here's your plunger here. And this is your overflow. So if, you're, if your float is stuck open, uh, allowing fuel to fill up, instead of that fuel going down into the cylinder through this port here, it'll come out here, go out your, this bottom nipple here. And you don't want this uh, kept without a hose on it. You want this hose to drain uh, underneath of the motor. Otherwise, that fuel is just going to drain right into the motor and cause a fire. So you take your screwdriver or a small pick, push this pin out. This is the, this is the float here. We've got the needle down here. Now on this carburetor here, this needle needs replaced. Um, there's enough corrosion on there. These needles get grooved and will uh, cause problems, uh, cause fuel to uh, continue to pour out. Um, if you've got a small pair of pliers, you can use it, pull this pick out, but here's the pin here, here's the float here, and then you've got your needle here, and again, this is, bottom of this float here is damaged. You can adjust this float if you need to, um, or adjust the needle and see by this little tab here, and you don't wanna adjust it very much at a time, you can just take, kind of put your screwdriver in here, just push, pull it down um, or pull it up depending on if you need to raise or lower it. You don't, don't want to do that if you, you don't want to do that instead of replacing this needle if that's what you need. So we've got your main jet here and that's where this needle will, will go right down into this main jet here. Different sizes depending on altitude, um, but you just pull this with a flat screwdriver, you can pull this. Uh, jet here, you should be able to hold this up to light and see through it. We take compressed air and we'll blow through it like this and you want to make sure that you can blow through it, make sure that you can see through it. If you can't see through it, you've got problems. You got your secondary main jet here. A lot of times, um, on a lot of carburetors you don't have a secondary main jet. Uh, you'll just have your main jet and your pilot jet. This one has a secondary main. So you want to take that out. Same thing, you want to make sure you can see through it. Make sure you can blow through it with compressed air. If you can't get through it with compressed air, that's where this tool's handy. You can take 
find the right size that you need here and just take and, and push it through there and clean it out that way. Then we've got your pilot jet here and it's a small screw, small jet all the way down into this housing here. You know, make sure that your screwdriver is on there good and tight before you pull it out. Um, if, if your screwdriver isn't on the way, you'll strip that brass pilot jet uh, and you won't be able to get it out. So you just spin it and come out. You should be able to just kind of shake it out of there. Again, blow through there. This is the smallest jet of all of them. And so um, very hard to see through there, but you should be able to see through there. Um, and then again, what I wanted to show you here is your air fuel screw right here. Now to set this air fuel screw or to take it apart, what you want to do is find, find where your screwdriver is tight here. You want to turn it in. So turn it clockwise clockwise and you turn it um, in as far as it'll go and we've got it seated here and then turn it um, and count those turns so they're supposed to be generally in between one and a half to two and a half turns out so as soon as you as soon as you start counting so I count one or a half one and a half two and a half and there it's seated there so mine mine need to be two and a half out so now then, now you can pull it all the way out. Now when you're going back together, you want to take and seat it um, all the way down and then turn it the correct amount of turns out. Again, it depends on altitude, air, air, um, air temperature, stuff like that. But here's your idle, uh, or your uh, air fuel screw. There's a spring on it and it's a small pin on the bottom. So make sure, there's, make sure that's not broke off or corroded or anything. So there's a spring too and that kind of just keeps this um, seated in there so it doesn't uh, so it doesn't walk itself out but again go all the way in with it and then pull it out um, the proper number of turns so you don't need to you don't need to put it in there really hard but until it kind of stops do half turn full turn half turn full turn half turn that's two and a half turns okay we're gonna go ahead and put this back together uh, the bigger jet the bigger hold Jet is the main jet, so if you get these two mixed up, secondary and main jet, the bigger one goes for the main, which is where that needle slides down into, the secondary goes beside it. And then your pilot jet goes down into that smaller port. And again, just make sure these are seated before you start turning, make sure you don't turn them too far. Again, it's brass going into aluminum, you don't have to get it extremely tight just you want to get it snug and then for your needle and seat just set your needle on here doesn't matter which way that wire is the same either way set it down on there run that pin through you want to make sure that pin goes all the way through and then you want to make sure that this will go up and down now you want to make sure that um, that the float doesn't set all the way down and this one does because that needle and seat is worn out so generally what the case would be it would stop about right there when you hold it up this one goes all the way down you can hear it touch the bottom there so then going back together put that on there line this port up here that way that bowl will sit all the way down there Put your four Phillips screws back in. Tighten all of them up. Again, doesn't have to be extremely tight. Just wanna make sure that it's snug. And then we'll go ahead and pull that uh, slide, that diaphragm, that needle out. Inspect that, clean that, and put it back together. You wanna to use, when you're cleaning these, you wanna use a carbon choke cleaner. You don't wanna use brake cleaner. It's, it gets extremely hard on these parts four Phillips screws to pull this top cap off. Generally, unless that diaphragm is bad, I'll show you one quick thing before we take this apart. Unless that diaphragm is bad, you generally don't have to do anything with it up here. It doesn't suck air, it doesn't suck dirt in here, it doesn't, fuel doesn't go up into this compartment, or it shouldn't. And so, generally you don't have to deal with bad fuel. You take this, you spray, spray compressed air in this top part here. And that'll slide up. That slide will slide up. If it doesn't slide, up, we've got problems. More than likely, that diaphragm's ripped. 
most of the time, if you're just, just having to do a carb clean, if you just spray air into that port and it slides up and down, nine times out of 10, or probably even 10 out of 10, that diaphragm's good and you don't even need to pull this cap. But since I'm showing you how to do it here, we'll go ahead and pull this cap quick and just see what components are in there. Spring loaded. So just kind of, I, what I do is put pressure on this cap when I'm pulling it apart until I've got all these screws out. Otherwise that spring can kind of pop out of there. It can potentially rip that diaphragm. They rip extremely easily and they also shrink and they expand. So you want to make sure you don't get fuel on this diaphragm. If you do, just set it kind of in a window or a, a spot that's going to warm up and dry out. You should be able to set it down in there. There's your spring here. And then here's your slide, here's your needle here, and there's your diaphragm. So inspect it, make sure there's nothing. This needle and seat will, or this uh, slide will only go down one way. So if it goes down, you've got it the right way. Just make sure that your needle and seat goes down into this main jet holder here, right in the center. So a lot of times you have to kind of go down slowly and kind of straighten that carburetor up so that needle will just fall down into that, that main jet holder. Now main thing, one of the most common problems with pulling this top cap off is a lot of times this diaphragm doesn't seat, especially if it shrinks because of getting dried out or because of getting fuel on it. So you wanna make sure it's completely seated before you go back together. If it's not, you will, you will ruin that diaphragm and you'll have to replace that and they're not cheap. So make sure that's seated completely before you put that cap back on. I always take and put pressure on that cap while I'm putting all these on so I just verify that it doesn't come loose and um, pinch that diaphragm in there. Again, causing problems. You'll have an air leak and you want this to be sealed tight so you don't want any kind of leaks at all. So I continue to put my finger on there until I get at least three of the screws in. And then when I get three screws in there, at least, uh, you can kind of let go of that diaphragm. And going back together, make sure you've got your, your choke and plunger. A lot of times that cable will stay on the four-wheeler if you're just doing a carb clean. So you'll have, you'll want to, a lot of times you'll leave this, as long as everything comes apart okay, you'll leave this connected to the cable. You'll just slide it in there, cable and all, slide it in there, the spring, put the cap on. Make sure this cap goes on there uh, straight as they're plastic threads and they strip, they cross thread easily. So there's your plunger with your spring and your cap there for your choke. That's a carburetor on a, a Kawasaki 400 Prairie.